Good evening and welcome to Town Meeting Television. I'm Seth Leonard. We'll be moderating today's discussion with Burlington City Council candidates for the North District. Joining me today will be Mark Barlow, who's an independent, and Kenan Christensen, who's a Democrat and progressive. Um, and Kenan's also obviously our uh, incumbent tonight. Um, we will be moving into the forum um, to uh, illuminate you all um, as voters of what's coming to you in a ballot on Tuesday, March the 2nd, 2021. Remember town meeting days, that time when all Vermonters go to the polls to vote on local issues, local candidates, and town meeting television is your opportunity to connect with those candidates and issues beforehand. And if you're watching from home, you can be engaged tonight. You can call in at 802-862-3966. Again, that's 802-862-3966. Uh, with any questions that you may have. Please note that when you do call in, each candidate will have an opportunity um, to answer your question. And remember, you can stay tuned to Town Meeting Television all throughout election season um, on Comcast Channel 1087, Burlington Telecom 17 and 217, as well as watching Town Meeting TV's YouTube page. So for Mark and Keenan, a couple ground rules for tonight. Candidates are gonna have a one minute open uh, statement telling us why they should be the candidate um, that you all elect on March 2nd. All candidates will have two minutes to respond to either studio questions or callers on the phone. Um, there may be questions from the public, so we will, we will be spending probably a lot of our time on the phone lines tonight. And each candidate can also ask um, or, or provide a rebuttal um, if they're evoked or they have something to say to the way the candidate answered another comment. And then we'll hope to get to 30 second closing comments. So with that, I'm excited to welcome Mark Barlow and Kenan Christensen. And Mark, we'll start with you for opening statements on why Burlington voters should elect you. Well, well thank you for having me tonight, Seth. Um, one correction though, uh, this is an open seat. Uh, it's being left open by Franklin Polino and there is no incumbent in this seat. So I'll start by saying, I think it's safe to say that Keenan and I are both committed to our community. I agree that the new North End is a great place, maybe the best place in the city to live and the building community and connections in our neighborhoods is really important. But in this city council election, voters have a clear choice. If you like the way that Max Tracy and the progressive majority have been governing on the city council, then Keenan is probably the candidate that deserves your vote. But if you have concerns about the way the city council has been governing, the initiatives brought forward, the recent decisions the council has made, then I hope you consider voting for me. If elected, I will not rubber stamp the agenda items of interest groups or political parties, I'll insist on involving all stakeholders in any issues and I'll promise to make the hard decisions when needed. I'll also always try to do what's best for Burlington. If you support me, you may not always agree with me um, or the way I vote on a particular issue, but I promise I'll always listen carefully, look at all the relevant information and consider all points of view before I make my decisions. Thanks. Thank you, Mark and Keenan. And apologies, made you, <laughs> you incumbent but we'll move to you next for opening statements. Well, I appreciate the compliment, but uh, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you all for hosting us. And, you know, the reason why you should vote for me as your next city councilor is because I've got the skills, the experience, and the enthusiasm to make sure that we get through this pandemic and that as we move through it, we're not leaving neighbors behind, we're bringing them with us. You know, two years ago when people were telling me, we need a community dinner, we need something to bring people together, I got to work to get that done. When legal aid came to me and said, hey, we've got incarcerated moms who are having trouble seeing their kids, can you help? I got me and my lawyer friends together to figure out a solution and provide a free legal clinic. When I found out that there was a number of individuals in our town who were not getting access to legal advice and they were survivors of domestic and sexual violence, I stepped up and started volunteering at Steps 10 Domestic Violence because community service and community engagement is important to me and it's important that we continue to work together. I'm in this to win it and I'm in it to represent you because I care about all of you and I'm committed to making sure that as we move through this pandemic, we're gonna get through it and we're gonna come out stronger afterwards. Timing, great. So now we'll move to the phones where we have a caller in waiting with a question. Go ahead, caller, and if you can be sure to start with your name and where you live in the city or the town you live in, we appreciate that. Okay, yes, yeah, sure. Uh, my name is uh, Springer Harris, and uh, I live in the uh, New North End of Burlington, uh, Ward 4. And my question is, um, Keenan, according to the campaign finance reports, you and your spouse have financially supported Max Tracy with multiple donations totaling $600. Um, and despite Max, Max's repeated votes to fund police, 
is all, you've also done drip lit drops with him and you claim to have made small donations to Ali because he's your friend. Why do you support Max Tracy who has led the effort to defund the police? And Mark, you have voice support for Moreau. And you have a sign in your yard for him. Why do you support Moreau? Great, for, so for this question, we'll start with Keenan first. Yeah, so this has been such an interesting race for me because we have three really fantastic candidates. And what, you know, I'm really good friends with two of them. I really appreciate Ali. I really think that he's a great community builder. I think that Max Tracy's bringing some bold ideas. And I think that Moreau's got some experience to get things done. And, you know, for me, this policing issue is not an unsolvable problem. I know Springer, you and I served together on the development review board and finding solutions and coming together is what you and I have always done on the, on the development review board. And, you know, when we're talking about policing, what I'm really excited about is we have an opportunity to really rethink how we go about public safety. Of course, we want to make sure that we've got the night shift covered. To answer the question that I'm sure is coming, yes, I would have voted to increase the police staffing because, you know, we really need to make sure that we have the appropriate public safety. But as we move past that, let's start talking about what Denver's doing with their STAR program, how they have reduced, reduced calls, how they've gotten more uh, community engagement, more public health officials out to help uh, individuals with mental health crises and how they've had zero use of force incidents in the entire year since they implemented that program. That seems like a solid idea that we in Burlington should be doing. And I really appreciate uh, Robin uh, Friedman Reguire who, who brought this to my attention. This is gonna be a fantastic program. And if you're interested in it, there'll actually be a forum on February 17th from 6 to 7.30 PM. I encourage you to reach out. It's hosted by Cahoots. I think it's gonna be a great, interesting way for the, continuing the conversation about how we move forward on public safety and how we do so in a way that makes sure that we're addressing the underlying issues that neighbors have brought before us. Really, Mark, we'll go to you. Sure, um, uh, thanks for the question, Springer. Um, I'm supporting Moreau because um, I, I think that he is the most experienced candidate. Um, he's been he's managed the uh, financial uh, he's the financial management of the city has been done very well by him. He's also um, <clears throat> he's also uh, the candidate that I believe can um, do the best for getting us out of the COVID crisis. He's, I think that he's done a great job so far with the uh, Resource and Recovery Center and some of the other initiatives we've had for COVID. Um, I'd also like to follow up though on, on your uh, question just with a, a comment that I didn't hear Keenan answer, which was um, you donated, you, you and your spouse donated $600 to the Max Tracy campaign and on his campaign finance report, um, he returned $250 of that money. And I was curious if you could elaborate on why that was. Yeah, so we've donated uh, $300 to both candidates. Uh, and um, as far as the strikeout, I don't, we, I haven't gotten the money back. So I think that it's just, uh, you'll have to talk to Max Tracy's campaign. But, you know, as I said, what really excites me about this mayor race and what I really hope people remember is that we've got three really good candidates. And it's, it's easy to say, oh, well, I support this person for that reason, or I support this person for that reason. But let's not forget, there are parts of the country where they don't have choices like this, where they don't have good candidates running for public office, where they've got, like for my sister, for example, she's got Trump Republican and diet Trump Republican. And I'm really grateful that we've got three wonderful people standing up. And I know that the mayor's race feels like a big deal and feels like you know, there's a lot of energy into it. But remember that we're neighbors and that, you know, regardless of who our mayor is, we all got to work together. And I'm committed to working with whoever the next mayor is. Thank you. Any rebuttal? I have nothing more. So, seeing and hearing now, we'll move back to the phones. I believe we have another caller in queue. Caller, if you can share your name and the town you live in, please. Sure, great. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Stephanie, and I am I live in Burlington. Uh, Keenan, you say you are running as a Democrat, but in 2019, you ran as a progressive against our current Democratic City Councilor, Franklin Polino. This year, you were already on the ballot as a progressive when you ran against a well-qualified professional Black woman for the Democratic nomination, successfully keeping her off the ballot. At this important moment of reckoning with racial justice, why would you seek to den deny the voters of the New North End the option to vote for a well-qualified Black woman candidate, Karen Durfee, when you were already on the ballot as a progressive? Mark, which party were you aligned with and work with on the council? Thank you so much. 
Yeah, thanks for that question, Stephanie. So what I love about this question is that the thing about democracy is that people get to vote and people get to participate. You know, I actually ran as an independent last time and I actually sought the uh, democratic endorsement last time and the city committee just uh, chose over the voters who voted in the new North End to endorse Franklin. But for me, I decided to run because I really am and envision uh, a democratic party that works together with the progressive party. I believe that when people are coming together, when we find solutions, when we work, reach out to our neighbors, regardless of their political affiliation, we get better results and we get we tamp down on the partisan rhetoric that we see at the at the national level and you know I'm really excited that so many of our neighbors came out to support me. I mean, 167 people voted for me in the Democratic caucus and 98 voted for me in the Progressive caucus. I mean, that says something that about our community and about our neighborhood, that they really want somebody that will work across party lines and that will continue to help support our neighborhood and will continue to bring people together. And, you know, as a young gay man, I'm really excited to be running for office. You know, 10 years ago, my husband and I couldn't even get married in most of the states. And now we can get married everywhere. And I'm excited to pave the way forward for so many other LGBTQ people to say, if you're willing to step up and run for your community, you don't need to have any special qualifications. If you're gay, if you're trans, please step forward. We need your voice. We need you in government. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there. Thank you, Keenan. Mark, as an independent, who would you work with on council? Well, um, as an independent, and I've always been an independent, um, I've, I've supported uh, progressives, Democrats, Republicans. I've worked on the campaigns of progressives, Democrats, and Republican, Republicans. But in this election, I find myself aligning more with all the, uh, the, the Democratic um, candidates and other contested citywide races. Um, certainly, I align with Joan Shannon, and she supported, supported me. Um, and um, I sort of find myself in the conversations I've had with Tiki recently to align with, align with him. Um, and I think we're aligned in our shared concerns over um, the governance that we've seen from the Progressive Party this last year. The lack of process, the lack of stakeholder engagement, and the sort of agenda-driven um, policy and initiatives that have come out of, out of the council. And so, um, with that said, who would I caucus with or, or align with once I got to the council? You know, I have this idea that I wouldn't caucus with anybody and that I would work with everybody um, because that's what I did when we were on the school board. We didn't have party designations. We didn't have caucuses. We just all uh, sort of work through problem, problems together. And so when I get to the council, my intention would be to probably seek out the people that I most strenuously disagreed with and then work work with them to develop relationships but in terms of who i align with right now i would say it's more with um the the, the democrats on the council just because of the current council makeup yeah i just got to hop in here with a quick rebuttal it's it's convenient that seconds. now that we're running in a big race where he thinks that it's good to align with democrats he couldn't align with sarah carpenter in her race he ran a, he supported kurt wright over sarah carpenter he supported bob he supported kurt wright over bob hooper i've been working tirelessly to support our democratic slate i will be caucusing with the democrats and more importantly i worked hard to help get good democrats elected i'm so glad we have sarah carpenter on city council because she's got fantastic housing experience and she's done an incredible job making sure that uh, we're getting some things done with the experience and know-how that she's brought. I'm really proud to have supported her and I'm glad that we got her on council. Well, I, I may I rebut? 30 seconds. Okay, so so I, I, I supported Kurt for a long time. Kurt's a friend of mine and he's also been an outstanding legislator and city councilor and city council president. I think that um, he couldn't run because of his uh, job at a radio station, um, but I worked to get him, to keep him on the council and I write in campaign and I'm very proud of that. We need to have all voices on the council. We have a lot of progressives on the council already. We have a lot of Democrats, but we, need, we needed Kurt's voice there as well. And that's why I supported Kurt. Um, and in his race against Bob Hooper, Kurt was um, a seasoned legislator that had worked on important, uh, uh, initiatives we had around education funding and things. And I just didn't want to see that lost. So Thank that's you why I've supported Kurt and I'm proud that I've done so. Thank you both. And a reminder to folks at home, you can call in at 802-862-3966, although we will 
note that we have four folks already in queue. So we'll move to the next caller. Caller, if you can please share your name and what town you're from. Hi, um, it's great to talk to Keenan and Mark. Um, Keenan, I, I believe that you and all the progressive candidates were endorsed by the Democratic Socialist Party. If you are a Democrat, why do you keep seeking other party endorsements? And Mark, for your part, why does it appear you have not sought any other political party endorsement? Thanks. Good. If you can share your name and what town you're from. Oh, yeah. Uh, Dave Shock, and I'm from the new north end of Berlin. Thank you, Dave. So I'm sorry, you know, Seth, I, didn't, the, I didn't hear the, the part of the question from me. Yeah, I, the, the gist of the question was, Keenan, um, why pursue an endorsement from two parties? And uh, Mark, why not pursue uh, an endorsement from a party? And Mark, we'll start with you first. Okay, so I'm an independent. I've always been an independent. I've never been a member of any political party or, or run for office in a political party. Um, you know, I, I think political party adds a layer of, especially at the hyper local level and city government adds a layer of um, not distraction, but um, it becomes a, sort of an, an obstacle sometimes to having really meaningful conversations um, and getting the important work done. Um, so I've chosen to always sort of look for things other than political party when I'm uh, supporting candidates. And it's usually the soft skills, the um, good listening, um, collaboration, compromise, um, ability to sort of uh, come together and agree on what the actual problems and priorities are. Um, and sometimes um, political parties have certain agendas um, that sort of drive a lot of the priorities and, and, and uh, the decision making. So I, I've tried to sort of be above that and use that as a secondary consideration. I also think it's important to have all voices at the table. So I like to see um, a, a diversity of political view on any deliberative body, as long as they can, you know, they can work together well. Great, Keenan Mark says no party, you say yes to two. Yeah, I think that's a commitment to who, who I am and, and frankly, my ability to bring people together. You know, the benefit of having a political party is it tells voters where your core values are. You know, it says, I'm running as a Democrat and I'm running as a progressive because I value, you know, freedom of expression. I value putting people before profits. I value making sure our environment is cleaned up. I value making sure that our neighbors have participation in government. And I think that when you run as an independent, particularly when you have a history of supporting Republicans over Democrats, I think it's a suspect. And more importantly for me, I've already been tested by the voters. I've won two caucuses. And I think that that's a huge uh, indicator of my ability to work with voters to make sure that people feel like their voices are being heard. And I'm proud to have the endorsement of so many other individuals too. I'm one of the first and only city council representatives here in this race to be endorsed by our teachers union. That's huge. They haven't been involved in a political election in almost a decade. And I am proud to have their endorsement because our teachers have been working very hard through this pandemic. They've seen all of the ways that our students have been impacted and the fact that they're backing me in this race i'm just so humbled because it says that i've got the skills and the ability to really move us forward and that's my answer to that thank you mayor Rebecca. 30 seconds so so um in terms of being tested by the voters i'll, I'll remind keenan and in, in our and te our television audience um or our zoom audience that i've actually won two uh north district elections as a school commissioner, and I've won them both, both in contested races. Um, and as far as the teachers union endorsement goes, um, I just wonder, I know they haven't su supported a city council candidate before, but your campaign treasurer is also the community relations director of the BEA. So I think that that in is inherently uh, conflicts a conflict. Okay, so that's his second rebuttal. May I have a second rebuttal? You can have a rebuttal. Awesome, thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that that's great, but your experience on the school board left teachers on strikes, left, we lost 25% of our teachers. We had, we had worse student outcomes and rising taxes. And so for me, I'm really proud to have the backing of our teachers union. I'm really ex ex excited that they endorsed me in this race. And I think that it's just, again, a testament to my commitment to our community and more importantly, my commitment to our students and families. Seth, I need to be able to respond to the school board comment. Uh, if we could go back and forth all night. 
So I, th I think we'll have to leave it there. If we can move on to the next caller, please, with the next question. Caller, please state your name and what okay. town you're from. Yes, hi. My name is Ms. Ward Four. And the is on the New North End Facebook page, Keenan claims that he's provided research to support progressive Councillor Perry Freeman's charter change proposal to create a new police disciplinary body that would have been biased against the police and cost the city more than $100,000 to implement. All council Democrats voted against it, and the mayor vetoed it. Keenan, you have publicly stated you supported the Biased Oversight Committee, and you would not have supported the mayor's veto. Please explain why you supported the Biased Oversight Committee. And Mark, can you please tell us whether or not you are supported as well and why? Last time we actually started with Keenan, so this time we'll start with Mark. So um, I, um, I did not see the need for an additional oversight committee. Um, I do believe that we need additional oversight and I um, support that, but I think that we could use our police commission to provide that oversight. Um, it'd be less expensive. Uh, I think the price tag on the, the, the citizen control board was $100,000 or more. It would be um, easier to implement. We don't need a charter change, so we don't have to go through the delays that come with you know, have, having the vote, having, um, having the charter changes approved in the legislature and by the governor, and then having it come back to the city and have the various uh, 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 other uh, city administrative that has to go on in order to implement the thing. If we use the police commission, we could probably have those oversight changes in place much quicker, maybe you know even this year sometime. So I, I just thought it was a uh, uh, an easier sort of way to go about that solving that problem. And I supported the mayor's veto. Sorry about that, Mark. Keenan, we'll go to you. Yeah. Well, thanks for the call, uh, the question. And, you know, I actually wrote the research memo for both uh, Councillor Freeman and Councillor Carpenter. And if you go back and read the memo, which I, again, is posted on the Facebook page, it talked about empowering our police commission and making sure that we were doing exactly what our police commission has suggested we do and a lot of what the mayor's already suggested. So I'm really proud to see that that research is getting put to work, that people are adopting my ideas and putting them into action. That's really what I'm about. I'm about finding solutions and solving problems. Now, when it comes to the mayor's veto, I come from a background in a state where it's really important that you give you know people the opportunity to weigh in i don't value when people aren't giving the, the value to voice their their voice on really anything and i think that when we hear people saying i really want to be able to give people an opportunity to participate but then veto the initiative that they want to participate in i don't really that doesn't sit well with me and you know I'm, I'm coming from a background where in Washington state, the, my ability to get married and my ability to you know, love my husband, to be in a loving relationship with him, that was put on the ballot by voters. And still I was in support of making sure that that vote got heard by the voters. Because when we allow voters to participate, it sends a signal to our elected officials. I didn't think that the control board would pass. I think it would probably have gone down poorly, but it would have sent a signal to the rest of the council that, hey, we need to move forward in a different direction. And I don't think that we shouldn't be giving people the opportunity to participate We've seen what happens when we don't let our neighbors participate. We've seen increased partisanship. We've seen people less trusting of government, and we've seen people less willing to participate in the process. That doesn't sit right with me. So I'm your city councilor. If you disagree with me, you have a right to be heard on that. And I would encourage you to vote on, uh, you know, against measures that I was voting on if it went before the people, if you disagreed with me. That's really what's important to me. Um. Mayor Rabat. Thank you. Yes, 30 seconds. So, so with return, in terms of the veto, I think that had we gone forward with a, a citizen control board question, I think we would have um, hastened the already um, rapid attrition we're seeing in our police department. We need, we need to rein that in. We need to send a signal that we're going to stabilize this attrition. We need to add um, more officers to the police force. Um, so I think that sometimes uh, in government, you just have to make the hard decisions. You can't send everything to the voters. And this is one of those things where um, this should have never been put on the ballot. 
Um, and we, it was, Moreau was right in vetoing it. And, and, and uh, I think that we'll probably be able to get to a better place with public safety because of it. Thank you. So we've got about four and a half minutes left. So I'd like to go quickly for one last caller and then circle back for closing statements. If I could ask you to keep your answers to the next caller to about 90 seconds, I'll flash that 15 second um, to go thing and we'll go that route. Great caller, you're with us. If you can share your name and the town you're from. Awesome. Hello caller, you're on live. Welcome to Town Meeting TV. Oh, um, I think I'm calling into the wrong debate. Sorry about that. No problem. Okay, so we'll shift back. You, um, there was mention of items on the charter. Could all, could both of you please, in a minute, um, share what you think of the charter items, and if there are any of them that are of particular importance to you that you support. And yeah, we'll start with you, Keenan. Yeah, so I think just real quickly, I think we should vote in favor of the school budget. I think Tom Flanning has done a really good job of cutting some of the, the um, resources, but I do think that we need to make sure that we keep our school funded. We've seen what happens when we don't fund our school properly. We've seen that when it, you know, we don't keep our schools supported through both the uh, reno renovation project that's going on. And so I think that everyone should be happy to have good schools and good teachers. Um, when it comes to the airport commission, easy one. I think Winooski should have a say in their airport. It affects them, so you know, problem there. Uh, the thermal energy system, I wrote, uh, and so that would be question three and question seven. I've written extensively about this. I'm in favor of both of them. I know that people think that there's going to be a tax on, on gasoline that's not in there, that's not in there on heating, home heating fuel. This is really about future proofing Burlington and making sure that we're setting up our new buildings uh, for the kind of electrification that we need as we get green energy online. It's not going to tax your home heating fuel. Sarah Carpenter and Cre uh, put in the amendment, an, uh, an actual amendment that would require that to go to a voters if, if the city council wanted to do that. Um, I think as far as the just cause evictions, I support Sarah Carpenter and her uh, view on that. I think that she, as a housing advocate, she's done a great job balancing the needs of our landlords with the balancing of our tenants. And I'm in full support of that. And I see I'm out of time. Thank you. And thank you, Mark. Um, so I, I also uh, support the school budget. It's less than a 1% increase in spending and that's hard to do in any year. So uh, I applaud that. Um, I support the airport commission expansion. I do not support the, uh, the charge change to regulate thermal energy systems. Um, and I think I need to think about how to implement policy to get adoption. We need, uh, we need, to, we need to make sure that um, we don't worsen affordability for homeowners um, with that. And, and I also think the net zero roadmap uh, didn't anticipate regulating carbon at the local level. It, it, it re anticipated regulating it at the regional, state, and, and uh, federal level. So I don't support that one. I don't support the ranked choice voting initiative. Um, it's a political power play by one party with the same flawed, it's the same flawed system that we repealed in 2010. And I don't know why it would be any better now for city council elections than it was for mayoral elections before. I don't support just cause eviction. I don't think anybody's made the case for it. I don't think we have the data for it. We need to collect the data and see if they um, actually have a problem there. And um, I do support the authorization of retail cannabis sales and I support the advisory question um, when applied to a policy that does not have the same problematic aspects as question three has. And Mark, you can keep going with 30 seconds for your closing statement to why you should be going to city council. So my closing statement. Um, there's a clear choice in this election. If you like the way the city council under the leadership of Max Tracy and the progressives has been governing, then vote for Keenan. If you want a more balance, if you want more balance and someone who will work toward reasonable pragmatic solutions to problems and issues, then I hope you'll consider voting for me. You can find out more about my campaign at markbarlow.org. Also, I wanna put in an early plug for the food drive we're organizing at the Ethan Allen Shopping Center on 227. We'll be posting more information on that as the date gets closer. Shifting to you, Keenan, with 30 seconds for closing. I believe that when we're coming together as a community, there really is nothing that we can't undo, and there's nothing that we can't stop, and there's nothing that we can't accomplish. The choice in this election is about somebody who's got proven experience, who's listened to many of you, who said, let's get a community dinner, let's get a book group, let's solve the problem of incarcerated moms not seeing their children, and let's find common ground. 
I'm really tired of the partisanship that's coming down from the national election seeping into our neighborhoods. I want somebody who's gonna support people coming together, who's gonna look at their neighbors and say, well, you can disagree with me, but we can still find common ground and find a path forward. If you want a voice who can bring people together, who can solve problems and who's got experience, I'm your guy. Great. Voters in Burlington have a tough decision to make on March the 2nd. Remember, polls will be open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. It's a wonderful time to check in with the city clerk, find out where you should be voting, how you can vote early, how you can vote safely in a way that's comfortable to you as well. Again, don't forget, Town Meeting TV can be your resource for tracking not just election night results, but making sure you're informed when you go to the polls. Keenan Christensen and Mark Barlow, despite my... Uh, Duff there at the beginning in, in regards to a, an incumbency. I'm sure the Burlington voters are very happy to have both of you on the ballot and appreciate your willingness to serve. Thanks for your time tonight and thanks for a wonderful forum.